Okay, um, thank you for the introduction, and I would also like to thank the organizers for in inviting me here to give this talk. So, the idea of this talk is uh, to give uh, more details of uh, the special case of how similarities are uh, resolved in quantum cosmology with the WWT equation. And um, since, since Klaus gave this, 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 this nice long um, introduction about the WWT equation, I will just uh, uh, present to you here the, the central features of this equation uh, again in the case of quantum cosmology. So um, the thing is, if you have this full relativity equation with the functional derivatives uh, and so on, it's extremely difficult to, to, to do something with it to, to, to calculate um, or to, to, to find a solution in, in, in the general case and so on. And so it's extremely difficult uh, to handle. And but if you go to a symmetry reduced uh, model, for example, of the universe. Then uh, this equation becomes uh, much more um, uh, much more handleable. So um, usually, of course, you use like a, a, a spatially flat, homogeneous, and isotropic universe with this metric. And in general, in quantum cosmology, one introduces uh, a scalar field um, with some potential uh, phi. This is, of course, a, a, a the really, really easiest case, but this is also because in the early universe, mostly we think that scalar fields are the ones which are important. And um, so, if you have this this whole superspace with infinite many degrees of freedom, if you do such a symmetry reduction, then this gets reduced to just two degrees of freedom in the scalar field and the scale factor. And as Klaus mentioned, this is then called a uh, mini superspace. And in the Lewis equation, instead of having functional derivatives and so on, you generally just have um, partial derivatives. Uh, and it, it looks uh, like this and. Of course, this clearly avoids uh, these mathematical problems you have in the full derivative equation. So um, normally, one or also if one wants to to solve the derivative equation, one introduces this uh, logarithmic uh, scale factor, and um, the equation then uh, looks uh, like this. Uh, so you you have it uh, even in a more uh, simpler form. And uh, so now, in order to find a solution for this uh, equation, um, for like a cosmological model of your choice, for example, in, in, in the case of the examples I will present in the following, um, the way is to choose a certain potential v, and then uh, give some uh, boundary conditions. And the thing is, uh, there is there are some subtleties in in the, if you consider quantum cosmology. Um, for example, if you have uh, such a cyclic model which starts with a big bang, then evolves and then uh, goes through a big bang, which is of course nowadays completely observationally uh, excluded. But if you um, would, if you, if you wanted to do a quantum cosmological model uh, of of this um, uh, um, cyclic uh, universe, uh, in the classical case, of course, you just need to give initial conditions here at the point of the um, big bang, but um, since there is no time in the relativity mm -hmm. equation, in the quantum cosmological model, then you would have to give initial conditions at, for example, a equal to constant. So in this case, this would be uh, initial conditions at uh, the time where a big bang, big crunch uh, somehow happen, but they, they don't really happen because there is no time as well. So this is, this, this is for example, uh, it's a bit more uh, subtle to the boundary conditions. And what one then does normally. Uh, when one uh, decomposes this, this wave function psi into a, a we can call it matter part, which includes the this scalar field and the gravitational part, and then one applies a one approximation to this um, gravitational part, and then in the end you get a wave function uh, of the universe. So this is the, the general procedure. And just to once again mention these these classical singularities, uh, which uh, I will discuss. So of course we have the the big bang, the most prominent one, where at, a, at um, some point in the the past, or if you call it big crunch in the future, um, the energy density diverges and uh, scale factor goes to zero. And yeah, the the other types, type one to uh, well actually type five. Uh, type 1 and Type 4, they were defined in this paper by Emoji, Rotsinz, and Tsujikawa. And uh, as was mentioned, there's this big rip that in, at some point in the future, scale factor pressure and energy uh, density all diverge in the big break, only the pressure diverges. Uh, if you have this uh, Type 3 big freeze, um, then only energy density and pressure diverge. and um, 
this um, very mild type 4 singularity in this case, all, uh, all the quantities uh, remain finite or are, are zero in some cases, and only uh, the second and higher time derivatives of H uh, diverge. And this is sometimes called mixed observation, but this is not really uh, the term, this is um, not uh, consistently used in, in the literature. And there's also a, um, this, this has been added like a singularity where you have a divergent of the meritocratic index. Okay, and again, uh, the question is can these singularities be resolved in quantum cosmology, which of uh, course Klaus already uh, gave an overview. So, uh, the general way how to do this mathematically in, uh, in uh, quantum cosmology is that you assume to have uh, a universe filled with an uh, ideal fluid and you have some equation of, of state relating to pressure and energy density. Of course, conventionally, this is just uh, related with the spirit of the index W. But in cosmology, one uh, has started, uh, like in the last 10 years or so, to use more uh, exotic types of uh, similarities, like this uh, chart leaking gas. So this has this somehow weird form that P is equal to minus 1 over rho with some uh, constant here. And this was first introduced by chart leaking actually to, to, do this, to describe a force which is somehow which acts on, on a wing in, in, in arrow uh, dynamics. And uh, then uh, by commenting it was in introduced that, that this might be, uh, that this, this would be a good way to, to model both uh, dark matter and uh, dark energy. So this Jardine gas has uh, the, the nice property that at early times it has like uh, dark matter and at late times it has like um, dark energy. So here in the, in the neutral Jardine gas has here a minus sign. And if you have an anti gas, there would be a plus sign, and you can also have a generalized Chantigen gas, where you have here, instead of rho, you have an O, a rho, uh, to the power of uh, beta, and uh, then you have some certain just on beta, so you can have like the infinite amount of uh, possible generalized uh, anti and uh, normal Chantigen gases. Um, and what you then do is that you convert this uh, Jardine gas to a scalar field with a certain potential. So you have rho and uh, p, and you use uh, these classical uh, relations uh, to, a, to a scalar field to then uh, get a certain uh, potential. And this potential is then what you plug in into the Gilded equation. So this somehow at first it seems to be that you know, okay, you just put it in by hand, but uh, the way of thinking is that uh, this relativity equation is like then the fundamental uh, equation to this describing uh, the universe. And uh, what you then, uh, so you have constructed a wave function which, if you then use the classical limit, gives back um, this, uh, this um, behavior of the scalar field, and then uh, this uh, uh, behavior of the equation of state, and then eventually in the classical limit you have this, uh, these singularities. So, the way of thinking is that this is the fundamental uh, equation. And as I have mentioned, you use this de decomposition into this uh, matter part and rotation part. This um, this um, matter, matter part then you have an equation like this and then you introduce here some kind of uh, energy function which depends on the background and this is basically what you have to solve and here you also have the gravitational part and you can neglect these two terms. Uh, because of the not time approximation that uh, um, because of the relation of uh, the background and, and uh, the matter fields that uh, the, the background does that, that does, does not really change with respect to, to the matter fields uh, and so on. So uh, again I, I will give you this, this example of a big fake because it's, it's a very nice one. Um, as I as it has been mentioned several times, so in the big break uh, uh, case the, only the pressure diverges, and um, this can be described, or this was described in this, in this paper here, uh, by an anti chart gas. So you have the chart gas, but instead of a minus, you have a plus sign here. And the potential then looks like this, so you have here this, this sign hyperbolic. And um, the relativity equation, close to the singularity, actually can be approximated also uh, by this, so that's such that the potential is just 1 over. Um, phi. And actually, uh, this, uh, if you then apply this for not the decomposition and so on, this uh, can be solved uh, analytically. And it, in this case, it's like this that 
uh, you have the normalizable, uh, if you want to normalize uh, your solutions, then immediately the, the wave function goes to zero at both the big break and um, the big bang. In some, uh, in some other cases, like this type 3 big freeze, you actually have to um, give the boundary condition that the wave function vanishes in the classically forbidden region. So you have some part of the potential which uh, classically cannot be realized and you have to demand that at this point it vanishes and then only then you have the similarity of one. But here it's but just the normalization gives you this. So here's uh, this graph in more detail. So you have this classical uh, trajectory which uh, starts with a big bang and goes to a big break or the other way around because as Scott mentioned there is no time. And uh, you can see these points here in the quantum pictures. So here you have again this uh, a scale factor and scalar fields. So this is your Gamma superspace and here the respective uh, wave function. And you see that the wave function is zero both at this place where the Big Bang was, it's zero at where the Big Break was, and it's zero at uh, also this other one, so it's uh, symmetric. So this is um, this, this example of the uh, Big Break. And uh, this, uh, this uh, other way where it's uh, completely different how to resolve similarities is this big rip. And as was mentioned, uh, this is um, the big rip is comes about in uh, models where you have uh, where, they, where you have a phantom field, which is a way to, to model that energy because that energy uh, it's well it's basically not uh, completely suited that this this variable like is smaller than, than ma minus one. So uh, quantum fields are a way to realize this, and they violate uh, the this uh, energy condition. And these, uh, if you then have this uh, this quantum field in this way, then you get this uh, very uh, violent big rip uh, singularity. So. Everything goes to infinity, scale factor, pressure, energy density. And the Rydic equation in this case, because you have quantum fields, um, normally you have here a minus sign. So in this case, you have a plus sign, and this Rydic equation becomes an elliptic equation. And uh, the result is then, as was mentioned, that the wave packet solution uh, is first a classical singularity. And in this case, you cannot then define any time classical evolutions so for the similarity theories. Uh, cannot be uh, applied, so in this case, uh, you have the singularity of this. Okay, so now let's go to this uh, example where I was actually uh, involved in this paper on type 4 singularities. Uh, so, as I mentioned, this is a very mild type of so singularity. Uh, the expansion of the universe comes to a heart in the future, and um, these, these uh, basically could be remain planets and in, in, in some cases they can be even way go to zero. And uh, one can describe this by a generalized anti chapigan gas. So you have again a plus instead of a minus, and you have this um, exponent uh, beta. And it has been found, uh, this is this was analyzed, and one can could see that uh, one has a type of singularity. For these cases, so you have just that beta has to be in this range, and but it uh, should not have uh, this escalation where p is a positive uh, integer. And again, this this um, potential then has this sign hyperbolic, and uh, for cases where you have this type um, for singularity, it looks like a double world potential. So you have here. Uh, the trajectory is like this, that the universe expands, and then at some point it hits this type of singularity, but of course then uh, this geodesics can be uh, extended through it. So uh, in this case, uh, the evolution then is expands expanding, then type of singularity. And um, then in principle, if you, if you avoid this, you have a contracting phase. So one could also uh, do this by uh, some kind of tunneling analysis, so we have some, some wave function which that tunnels through the singularity. But we did it like this, that we uh, discussed the case that beta is equal to minus one half, which is actually not exactly the type of singularity, but this, this is the, uh, the case which we could solve analytically. And if you put up this like slightly, you can put it plus epsilon, then you have a real type of singularity. And 
they found the potential does not that does not does not change at all. So it's it's like uh, stable in this in this limit. So we uh, use this quantum analysis here in the for uh, for this case and uh, get a very very big equation for this. Um, so again, we use this uh, decomposition into the matter part uh, and gradation part and. Well, in general, you, you get then some complicated uh, function, and um, but what you often have in uh, quantum cosmology is that uh, you have then have to deal with some uh, special functions which you know, in other parts of physics you, you would never encounter. So in this case, if you want to solve this this matter part equation, you uh, uh, end up with uh, what is called a coin function. And uh, so you have here the solution is then here this this uh, Gaussian then the Hein function then you also Gaussian but here there is um, this uh, factor x which x is just related to the to the scalar field and again this Hein uh, Hein function the important property is that these Hein functions are regular at, at the origin so they have just the value one and they increase as a power for uh, large x or large pi so. At the point where the the, um, the wave function uh, should go uh, to zero for, for large pi, this is uh, the case because we have this Gaussian. So this behaves uh, uh, everything behaves really nice. So, <coughs> but then you have here the left side is symmetric. This right side is anti-symmetric. So this right side vanishes at uh, x equal to phi equal to zero, and this is the point where the singularity is. But the right side uh, does not. So this part vanishes at a singularity, and this part does not. And if you solve the gradation part, this does not. The spoiler result so, uh, remains the same. So the result then is, well, you have solutions, which have only this isometric part, which are injected at a singularity, but this other part uh, does not. So only a subset of the valid um, wave function solution uh, avoids the singularity. And as I've mentioned, the double potential it remains the same. So we could not conclude that, um, I mean, even though this analysis was strictly speaking not in that in the case of a type of singularity, if you could have a slightly, mm -hmm. then you have one and this uh, uh, remains valid. So this was the case of the uh, ordinary uh, scalar field with type of singularity, but just to mention, we also repeated the analysis for a phantom field. Uh, so in this, in this case, we have, have to change some signs and um, uh, in the end, you get a periodic potential, and uh, this is not really a realistic model. So the evolution of the universe, if you have here a quantum field, is like this, that uh, it somehow contracts, goes through a type 4 singularity, uh, and expands, and here at this point, it's it's uh, the zeta, it, 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 it approaches the zeta. So, um, this, but it, it's, it's, it's kind of a funny potential, so you have the periodic potential, but the classical uh, a large region, or the region where the classical evolution takes place, is only uh, is restricted to this this one uh, period. But somehow, in the quantum theory, you have like the whole potential available. Um, but again, we we discussed in this case, we discussed only the singularity resolution, and it was also the case that uh, only for a subset of the wave function, uh, like, like in the case of uh, the ordinary kind of scalar field, that uh, the wave function vanished. Okay, so this is all what I wanted to present. Here is uh, the summary which we can go uh, through um, once again. So uh, we had these uh, like five cases which were discussed in Klaus and, and my talk. We had this uh, big grip where scale factor, scale up here, uh, the scale factor, pressure, and uh, energy density all go to zero, and the singularity was resolved. That in the case that uh, the wave packets stays dispersed at the classical singularity, so that you cannot define any, any classical thing and you cannot apply a singularity to it and so on. This was the big grip type singularity of, singularity of type 1. The big break, where just the pressure diverges, this is, uh, was the case where you normalized your solutions and they vanish both in this model at the big break and the big bang, but in general, I mean, the big bang is, is, a, is, a, is it's an issue. In, in this case, it gets resolved, but in general, Relativity really theory, it, uh, it just gets resolved in, in, certain, in special special models. And then the big freeze case, which Klaus mentioned, was that here in this case, where pressure and energy density both diverge, you have to 
uh, assume that the wave function vanishes in the classically forbidden region and then it vanishes also at uh, the singularity. And then type 4, which are presented here in detail, where only a subset of solution vanishes at the singularity. And then also this, this little bit, which is kind of a liquid, put to the going to uh, uh, the liquid put to infinite time, where also the wave function vanishes then for, for late times for going to infinity. So, so the question is, I mean, we, we discussed everything here in specific models, but the question is, is this somehow a general feature that, uh, so that that little integration in this case can somehow solve this? Because after now we have just discussed specific models, but not uh, uh, general cases, and this might be then the question for uh, future research. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. Uh, I have some comments related to this uh, names of the singularities. In fact, uh, what you call type 4 originally was called uh, General Sudden Future Singularity by John Barrow uh, because uh, here uh, these higher uh, derivatives of the scale pattern actually diverge. But if you take into account this uh, Odinsov to Jikaba paper about this classification, then in fact type 4 was for the uh, barotropic equation of state. And uh, in fact uh, you have here a uh, Chatwigging gas, which is different equation of state. But what they found for type 4 was in fact uh, uh, that also uh, the W index, barotropic index actually diverged. This is what they meant by type 4. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's why I called it big separation, because you have pressure, W index, and energy density. So somehow W index separated pressure from the energy density. Both of them are, can be finite, uh, W index is infinite. And then type 5 or, or this W singularity is something where W index goes to infinity, but both pressure and energy density are in fact uh, zero. Okay, so it's very, very, very tricky limit, but it's uh, quite a uh, open limit. And uh, related to big break, I think uh, it's also that originally big break is uh, a kind of a subcase of uh, what John Barrow called uh, sudden singularity. Yeah. Sudden singularity is for a finite uh, energy density, while big break is for zero energy density. Then pressure actually diverges. Okay, so, so these are kind of subtleties here. Other questions? Yeah. I have a comment regarding the big rip similarity resolution here. So we know that in the case of the phantom matter, the kinetic energy is negative. And classically, many people have shown that these cosmologies are unstable. So I think that is precisely the reason why you get the elliptic uh, type relativity equation. But the problem is that uh, unlike the big free similarity, in the case of the phantom matter, since it has such a weird Hamiltonian, matter Hamiltonian. Uh, first of all, it looks to me slightly uh, a bigger assumption that we can do this approximation, what you did with the wave function, because mm -hmm. the wave the, the potential plays a very important role and it's unbounded below in the sense. So you will not be able to have any, any self-adjoint extension or anything. So uh, I think like probably it may be a good idea to check the stability of the system even at the quantum level. If the approximation turns out to be good, it will be really good, but it has to be set. Okay. Do you have anything? Uh, other, other questions? Ah, uh, yeah. Big crunch. You identify with Big Ben? Uh, now, why in the, in the list there is no big crunch? Um, well, it, 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 it is somehow, uh, this would be somehow some kind of uh, type zero. Case. It's, uh, in this case, this all refers to singularities which happen uh, in, in, in the future, and the, the Big Bang is the Big Bang, Big Crunch, uh, the Big Crunch should be somehow uh, could be included as, as some kind of uh, type zero. But uh, this, this was also um, somehow 
in, in this in this cycling models you have it, but but here we in, in this list of uh, these uh, in this list by Odin of and, and the others that this was not uh, included. But but you can include it as a as a type of type of uh, type and of this property is it only a subset of solution range is only for type four exactly yeah. not for big bang. Uh, I mean, the big bang it's it's uh, uh, as I said it it. Can be resolved, for example, in this case of this big fake model. But if, if you want, in general, it, it, it cannot be resolved. If you, if you have a realistic model of the universe, then in the little bit case, it's it's in general uh, not resolved. Yeah, I think it's still open. In general, it's open and for the big bang to crunch. But one would expect the um, Are there other questions? Yeah. In loop quantum <coughs> cosmology. Uh, we can also define some operators like uh, energy density operator, and then classically uh, singularity uh, at singularity energy density is is infinite. Yeah. In loop quantum cosmology, we can even bound the this this en energy density operator, so we can show it's bounded from above in some okay. others. Th then it's a very strong avoidance. Of of singularity. Do, do you have similar fra framework here? Uh, no, in this case, I, I don't think we uh, we, we, we just uh, analyze the wave function itself. So the, there is no not really uh, any really any energy uh, is we, we, we do not discuss it in the way of. Yeah, for example, in the big break okay. there near the singularity, they have this Coulomb potential, and then in a sense, like with the hydrogen atom, you have this boundedness there too. In, in the big break, at least. I see, so we see. also analyze some observables. In, in, in that paper with the big yeah. break, but in other papers, it was um, I mean, it was not so easy to do. So it was more the level of first the vanishing of the wave function, and then just having the normalizability, I mean, having the, the scalar program. And, but with n with observables, it's I think. It's, not so easy in, many, in the generic case, but in particular cases, for example, the Coulomb thing, because there it's just bounded like in the hydrogen atom. I mean, you don't have <laughs> the singularity. Um, any other questions? Um, so, actually, let me, uh, let me ask one. Um, so, um, uh, I, I have um, other concerns about this, uh, the, the big rip case. I mean, um, so, um, I mean, you have just these two degrees of freedom, the scale factor and, and the scale of the field, and, and, um, and they, they contribute to the same size. You get these equations, and, and, and those are very nice. But, but, um, but it's actually the, the scale factor that, that has a sort of weird contribution, which is what gives you hyperbolic equations in the first place. So now imagine that you're doing your big thing, but now you add some anti -sophic. So, so now you will get equations that have you know multiple space derivatives and multiple time derivatives. And these are of no, you know, no sort of mathematical type. Um, so I'm, I'm sort of worried about, you know, well posing this. I mean, does, does the question even make sense if, if you have, you know, the big rip case and you have um, an isotropy? You know, are these, are these equations one expects to have solutions for? I, I'm not sure. I, mean, I, I did not work on this big bit. Uh, I don't know whether. Uh, Can I answer, David? Yeah. So if you have if you have quantum matter and if you will have an isotropy, then since this big rip singularity is operating at in future at infinite volume, then isotropies will not play any role. So I think people have studied quantum matter in the one system, and the big rip singularity classically is not affected. Uh, I see. Okay. It's not the singularity of the past. It's not a going to zero. Then an isotropy will be dominant. It's a going to infinity. Yeah, but but even if the anisotropies are small, um, I mean something that that you know sort of destroys the the well posedness of the situation. Um, you know, I mean you can do that even if it's small. And so I think well posedness is a very important question. And we see phantom models are unstable completely. They have ghosts. That is a completely different question. I don't think an isotropy will help to make well positiveness. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sort of saying the opposite. I think they'll, they'll destroy well positiveness no matter how small they are. And, and if, if I have a, a mathematically ill-posed um, 
system, but I'm not sure, you know, how it's supposed to treat. So the point is that uh, actually phantom will always dominate because it, it, there is no cosmic hurt even here. Uh, it's cosmological constant can dominate if you have uh, matter which is not phantom like. Okay, uh, it, it is famous no hair here and for the cosmological constant. But here, phantom, even if you have a small amount of it, then it will dominate. That you, it also uh, dominates over the the analysis of your thing. Okay. okay. So that's the point. Okay. Um, any, uh, any more questions, comments? All right. Let's uh, thank our speaker here.